Hello everybody, welcome. Well, it's the morning after and I've rapidly taken down the door to try to get at the pots because I've got to go somewhere today and I'm ho hopefully going to take some of the pots with me. So let's just go and have a look at the results of this firing. Um, let's go over. As you can see the door is down and uh, pots here on top of now, this is my first firing in this kiln. I didn't know what the clay body I was using was like. So it's been a little bit of a, um, as I said, a steep learning curve. But we've basically, I think if, you know, if I had a, a, a criticism and that, and that is that the, the glaze and the pots are slightly, um, oxidized not quite enough reduction and that's just I guess my not knowing exactly uh, this kiln at all you know you, you've got to get to know a kiln you know we're not firing these kind of kilns with a computer which does it all for us. We've got to be a little bit more present and, uh, and, and a firing of a kiln like this you do have to you have to get you've got to get to know it you've got to get to know and it, that takes a bit of time. A little lonely pot down here. Yeah well I would say it's a little bit on the a little bit on the oxidized side in general. But you know I guess you gotta be thankful now. The whole thing could have fallen down or collapsed or uh, there's one you see which is now that's that one which was the one of the um armadillo type pots I was doing but you know, when you get an oxidized gl type glaze like this, which is like more like what you get out of an electric kiln, um, there doesn't really seem to be any depth to the, the glaze. It seems to be rather sort of... However, 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 and this was a strange one. I, I did spray some wood ash onto these and you can see the, the, the sort of blushes of wood ash there where I've blown. You see underneath there, see how grey it is, the clay body? But right around the side it's a bit browner, well that's the wood ash, it's just giving it a slight toasting. Incidentally this iron oxide I use seems to be coming out black, I don't know quite why that is, but anyway. All good fun and lots to learn of course. Oh, ouch, 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 ouch. Just wanted to show you this one. This is, ooh, that was one of those ones I did with the um, cheese grater. You can see the grates down the side. That's a good little, a good little tool. That that cheese grater. And look, there's a paddled one. These are still a bit hot in here. But anyway, you can see that, that that kind of pattern on there, that's paddled on when it's wet. Just after I've thrown it, I've got a wooden paddle and I paddle it on. Here's a little, a little casserole dish. It's still a bit hot, that fella. All right, well, still more to get out. It's sort of pretty hot in there at the moment. I'm gonna have to try and clear these pots away here in front to get access to the back. Anyway, just thought I'd bring you in on that and um, just to show you what's been going on. Hmm. Well, I don't like oxidized work particularly, but it's not, it's not desperately bad, but it's, you know, hmm. room for improvement. Okay, well next time I know, you see, because this was like a test, so the next firing I'll be I'll be a bit more vigilant about making sure we've got a bit more reduction.
Okay, Simon Leach here saying, keep practicing. <laughs> it's the only way. Hang on in there. See you around. Bye-bye.